so much. We honor you as we continue to worship you. We pray that we will always be mindful that you will never, ever give up on us. It is in Jesus' name.
This is um, a heavy word, and when um, just again I talk usually early part of the week, and I forgot it until the moment um, that I talked about the pain and where we're going. You kind of know that's where we start going out. Um, the only thing I can think about. Not necessarily the uh, worship songs about the horse. Um, what could all the people here be reminded of this morning? And uh, I can't think of a more appropriate song to head into a word like this. Because here's the thing about the love of God. It doesn't make sense because it's a loyal love. Let me clarify what I'm saying by that. You, in your natural mind, don't have any business being loyal to people who are continually faithless towards you. You ain't got no business being loyal to folk who do your family wrong, who do you wrong, who talk about you, who lie on you, cheat from you, steal from you. You got no business continuing to let that happen. And yet, this is what we do to God. And he loyally still chooses to love us. This week I have cheated on the Lord. You have cheated on the Lord. It's called sin. And God's still loyally loving you. So it's not a love. Hear me good. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> this has nothing to do with your merit. This song came in a generation of time that was so good for believers before. 
because we somehow thought that our works is what made us more acceptable to God. And that cannot be farther from the truth. The scandal of the gospel is that God already knew you were crazy and were going to cheat on him, and he still sent his love towards you. That's loyal. What kind of love song is that? Where God is singing over a cheating believer. This is love, not that we love God, but that first John, but that He first loved us. So we only sing this song. I got wrong song. We only sing this song because of what he enacted first. Oh, man. And that's good to remember for a word like this, that God enacted his love towards you first. God enacted his love towards you. And you can't do nothing about it. That's how Big Mom used to hug you. I love you, baby. If there ain't nothing you can do about it, that's the Lord of God. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Sing for the Spirit. Yeah, he loves us. what 
believe, come on, they fall, amen. You know, so maybe there's some reasons the papers will be inside there. I won't talk to you. So entering into this, into this topic that's interesting for numerous reasons because here's this thing, is that this word divorce has hit somebody in your family, has encountered somebody um, that you are around, you cannot escape this reality uh, in the world in which we live now. And I want to say they could not escape the reality in the world in which they lived then. We're talking about in the biblical times when Jesus is talking, but we're also going to address Old Testament times as well. And in all of the scenarios, here's what we knew. Folks was going to break up. Can I tell you why folks break up? Because we are people. And because we are people, we are prone to wander, born in sin, wrapped up in iniquity, in this flesh. And all of us, here be good up in here. Now let me say this, I'll, I'll jump. This would not be in the canon for all of us if it was not beneficial for all of us. So talking about divorce this morning is an applicable lesson from babies all the way up to the top, from single to divorce to married right now to I'm just trying to hold somebody's hand at the movie one time. You know what I'm saying? Like it's applicable to all of us, all right? Now, what we have to understand here is, is that what does the word say about this? And, and we're about to pick up right here in this passage. Again, anything I've been talking about, Lord, listen, listen, listen. Can I tell y'all something? If I had an option to skip, I would do it. Is that just not true? I mean, if I had an option to, I would. But here's the thing about expositional preaching, which you know what's happening right now, is that the text is going to pick on people. I'm listening. If the pastor don't pick his favorite, message he like to preach, he don't get a chance to talk when I'm not. The text is going to deal with it. And so we're just walking through it. Like, here we are. This is where we at. You know what I'm saying? Now, we want to make a stop. We want to talk about this on Mother's Day. That has been, you know, come on now. It's Mother's Day. I'm talking Mother's Day. You know what I'm saying? How many times have been? Come on, Lord, it's Mother's Day. Like, no, we got to You know what I'm saying? But, but now, here we are. Can't skip it. This is right, right up in it. What? But where do we come from out of this? Now hear me. There are multiple passages about divorce that we find in Old Testament, New Testament, different places. So let's just deal, hear me. Let's deal with this one. All right, let's deal with this one. And we'll deal with, I'll, I'll make some reference to what's going on outside. We'll deal with this one because we're in sermon on that, all right? What's happening? We are still in the antithetical statements. What does that mean? Jesus, all throughout Sermon on the Mount, and really throughout the book of Matthew, he's exalting and making sure you can see him as king, number one. Number two, in these antithetical statements of Sermon on the Mount, he is communicating, look, I agree with the law, all right? What I don't agree with is bad application therein of that law. So we already know, I'll jump based on what we have been reading through Matthew, that Jesus agrees with the law, right? But he's going to make sure that he puts the house in order and make sure that the application is done correctly. So Jesus is about to address this messy part of the law that people end up getting wrong. And why is the law in place? I'll keep going this. Why is the law in place? Because um, the Lord knew us. What you mean, know us? Like, he just knew us nothing. No. The Lord knew this is nuts. The Lord knew Carlos was crazy. The Lord knew, Lisa is wild, the Lord knew that you are crazy. And in so doing that, here we have in Old Testament, now Lord goodness gracious, here we have in humanity, humanity needed boundaries knowing that we were going to go outside of it. Why would we need, God Almighty, why would we need boundaries? Why would we need boundaries if we know we're going to go outside of them? Come in, Galatians. Thank you, Pastor Lowe's. It served as a guard for us. Okay. It served as a guard for us. And so this, <laughs> this law that Jesus is about to address is talking about 
This serves as a guard. These serve as guard rails. But you, we, ready? You are in danger when you are on the road. Help me, Holy Ghost. You are in danger when you are on the road. And the question that you ask is, how close can I get to the side of the road without hitting? How close can I get to the boundaries without going over? How close can I get to the guardrails without scraping my car? Um, I, I go to work in the morning. I have to go over. I know you know this too. I have to go over um, that bridge in on West Five, going towards Pineville. And certain times in the morning, that sun be right in your eyes, don't it? And I'm telling you, I'll be like, I can't see nothing. And my daddy taught me this. He says, make sure when you are driving, if you are struggling to see, focus your wooey, focus your eye on the yellow line to keep you inside of the lane. You and I don't like law because we have to focus on it to keep us inside of it. And therefore, Jesus has to come and address it. It's bad application of it. Now, here we go. Watch. Where are we going? It's also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. Here we go again. Jesus is saying, I know what you heard. I'm about to straighten this thing up. Now, look. This is connected to Mosaic Law. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 24. And a lot of Deuteronomy, for that matter. And a certificate of divorce. Who we? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to talk about. Um, in a, what we call a balanced environment, we'll that in a second, because people look at this passage, um, and I, I love the people like you, it's like a real deep term they learn now, how this, um, <laughs> like this, this gospel is so uh, patriarchal, and it's only meant for, for me, and stuff like that, they use like little deep terms like that, or whatever, like, okay, you know, all right, you know, people who want to, you know, go against the grain of scripture, not realizing, like, hey, you ain't read your Bible right here, let me tell you something, this certificate of divorce written right here, watch this. It was for the protection, you ready, of women. Moses made sure, watch this. Now, the law still, be like, God still had the intention for one man, one woman in divine union for, forever, all right? Uh, however, here's what Moses made sure his understanding in the law. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You do know people are nuts, right? You do know people are crazy. Here's what was happening. There were men getting married to women, and then they decided, you know what? I don't like them anymore. You know what? That girl over there, she's more fair. I don't like her. I'm going to go with her. Wait a minute. You know what? God, that girl over there, she comes from money. So I'm going to just easily step away from this marriage and then go line my car up with somebody else. Now think, now here's the next part. But here's how messy it became after that though. Because people be lying, right? Watch this, they be lying. So this man would go off and leave this woman who has no way of protecting herself and keeping herself and providing for herself, divorce her, go with somebody else, and then let's say Mary decides she wants to go and get married to somebody else. Um, and here's what will happen. That old thing, say, I'm the old thing back, the old who would show back up and say, hey, wait a minute. Uh-uh, she's still married to me. Wait, wait, you know what happens, though? You know what happens? The reason why you do, you do that sometimes? She's still married to me. So that dowry money that you were about to make sure you give belongs to me because technically my name's still on that thing. So Moses said, y'all, you all are that flawed and fallen and sinful that you would leave your bride to go with somebody else, be married to somebody else, and never give her a certificate of divorce to prove that y'all are actually divorced because if she decides to move on with her life and do something different, now you want to make claim on her and make her live in misery the rest of her life because you are so nasty. Moses saw this way. No, 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 no. Can't let this happen. No, 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 you horrible people. No, 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 no. Can't do it. So we see this, goodness gracious, we see this given here as a way to make sure that 
Watch this, that they are protected. Now here's the other part. Uh, not, 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 not just that the woman's protected, but that with her next boo, she decided to get with, he's also protected. So he's not in adultery as well. So make sure, hey, listen, if this is gonna happen, where is the certificate that explains what's going on? Now, this, this building for us, I'm gonna give you a second. Um, um, we, ooh, I'm trying to walk through it slow. Um, we gotta understand, I keep saying this all the time, people are gonna be people, all right? Check this out. But the law gonna be the law. Um, people gonna be people, but the law gonna be the law, all right? Um, just because we know folks are flawed and fallen, we don't, y'all ready? We don't go, oh, that's possible to walk through this together. We don't go to the scripture to go read and find something that will justify the stage of life that we in. If we have fallen in happenstance, and I hope you come to scriptures to get clarity. You hear me? Clarity, not justification. There's a difference. Come to the scriptures to get clarity, but not just justifying what it is you want to do. Because, listen, we live in the culture, we live in the culture, that same thing, same thing happened. The Nicole that depending on we, depending on who teaches it, determines how it look. Y'all like to say it again. Depending on who teaches the law, determines how it looks. So guess what? That means that depending on who you want, listen, some folk are aligning themselves with certain teachers and people, not because they so much believe in them, but because it justifies them doing what they want to do. That goes with who wants to go there. Why, why are you saying that, Pastor Vince? Because I'm going to show you the text. Why, why, why. Because mm, Jesus is addressing this because there's bad application that's happening around the law of divorce. Because there are two schools of rabbinic thought, all right, that are happening here around divorce, all right? Here's the rabbinic thought. There's this rabbi, the, sh the Shammai, this, this, uh, the rabbinic thought, the Shammai, uh, rabbi, and there's the one of Hillel. Let me explain that means to you, because that's all the last stuff you want to say. Watch this. Um, the, the, the rabbinic thought of the Shammai was around divorce was like this. Um, listen, um, it is forbidden. It is forbidden. It cannot even happen. Now, but yet, we've got Deuteronomy here that talks about that there's more than just two get a divorce given. Meaning, why would it be listed there if we did not know what's going to happen? So this school of thought is forbidden. All right? Come on. Hillel, watch this, on divorce. Very open. Like, hey, look. If she cooked your grits wrong, you can divorce her. First of all, that's a lot of pressure. Um, second of all, huh? Now can, you, can, I, can I say something? Can I go here? Ooh, ooh, we'll get in trouble. We'll get in trouble. Can you can you guess probably what the dude who's already had a wandering eye? Preach boy. You know what school of thought he's probably going with? Hallel. Why? Because I agree with his interpretation of the text. No, you're looking for a justification to get out of something because you've been wandering looking at a girl down the street for the past six months. Now, over here, in this school of thought, in this school of thought, maybe you're staying here like it is forbidden because, ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, because you living in law, you ready, gives me promise, makes me feel better. You, you do know that some people, can I, oh, I'm going to go here. You do know that some people try to get 4.0s not because they actually care about the education, but because they use it to pat themselves on the back because they want something to make themselves feel better. There are some people who try to be perfect because they don't like themselves and they want something to hold themselves on to that gives them some stand of meaning. These law-abiding deep saints, deep saints over here felt good about keeping the law. Now here's the thing. Now, you should ask their wives how they felt. Oh, goodness gracious. So, so, here's what Jesus is doing again. 
Two schools of thought. Here's what happens. They're both in a ditch. And Jesus says, let's bring it back to the world. Because this is wrong. This is wrong. And you got it from the text, which is right. Let me say that again. This is wrong. This is wrong. But you say you got it from the text, which is right. Do not forget this. There will be people who teach you from this, which is right, who will apply it wrong. That's, that's for everything, okay? So, so these two schools of thought. Now, can I tell you who is the audience, the primary audience that's that Sermon on the Mount? Now, we do know there's a mixed audience there. We also know that the, uh, the OG disciples, the 12, they are there. But it's also a large group of people who are really wow at the teachings of Jesus. Meaning, they're trying to follow him. You ready? A new rabbi. And Jesus saying, if you don't follow me, don't fall in either camp. This is where we at. This, this, this is where we're going to be. Meaning, I'm try to get there. Meaning, meaning, this, oh gosh, this certificate of divorce that has been given, or I'm trying to get there, is they were getting divorces for petty things. They were getting divorces for reasons that didn't make sense. Okay? Um, now, it's to bring clarity, Jesus trying to bring clarity here, but what is it? Okay, now I know this part. No, even wait on this part. I read on this part, okay? But I say to you, everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual morality, makes her put in adultery. Oh, man. Oh, we. I'm going to try my best to walk through this and again be all about stuff, right? But. This little piece right here has done some damage. It's done some damage. Um, I'm going I'm to share all of my business for a second. I had a friend of mine, early part of my ministry, who was going through some things in her marriage, uh, and I wasn't quite sure how to give the best advice I was trying to give you based on what I was taught. If there were some things going on in that marriage that should not have been happening. All right? Um, golly, I'm trying to go here. Um, y'all want to pray, pray for me, pray with me. Um, I didn't know, and some people still don't know what to do. Okay, but it don't seem right here. What if he beat her? That was a little hard to me. It, it don't seem right here. Say right here, what if he is so verbally abusive? Will we? It doesn't say right here, what if he is uh, being nasty around my children? It doesn't say, you name the scenario. It don't, but what, that, so you telling me I need to stay? And this man trying to kill me? Y'all don't want to talk to me. You mean I got to stay in this? The, the, what we have to understand is though, that this is not, not no, no, I gotta go back. We've been reading how we talk about this, how we follow up, okay? Um, how Jesus has been teaching us to struggle now. Like, why is it that we've had people who honed in on this one idea in stringent, literal terms at this one exception? Now, you've had, I'll say this, there's been flexibility all throughout the rest of the antithetical statements. And here we get right here at this exception clause. It's like, that's the only grounds. Let me, because again, I want to make sure that I'm not reading under y'all, that I ain't studying. Let me show you what I was reading on this that messed my whole head up. Um, let me make sure I'm saying it right. Look at this. <laughs> the exception clause has evoked much discussion. The following points may help to clarify Matthew's meaning. Despite the legal sounding form, Jesus is not offering a new law. <laughs> of the antithesis, this has been the most literal and legalistically, but such an interpretation misunderstands the nature of the teaching in Sermon on the Mount. Matthew is not offering a new causatory, but gave a model for creative affirmation and application of the radical demand of the will of God 
by uh, explained by Jesus. By including an exception clause, Matthew has in principle indicated that there is another exception and there can be others. He is not a text to prescribe what these might be, but illustrate the fact that Jesus' teaching must be interpreted, here it is, on a case basis. Hear me good, though. But it is not what we don't hear this and say, yes, I found the way out. No, then you would look at, here it is, you look at how close you can get to that line again. The, 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 the exception clause, watch this, watch this. The law is given knowing people are going to act up. Can I tell you something? We, humankind, is inventing new ways to sin every day. Ooh, that was a good, that was a good one. We are inventing new ways to sin. We're inventing new ways to sin, meaning there is some stuff we, that we didn't have, like, so you would really do that? Like, we didn't know, like, listen, we're, we're trying to be exhaustive right here in what that exception might be. However, hear me good. Look, let's also do the other the actual bosses in there. Even in that, there is still an ability and ground to make up that there can still be restoration there. There can still be restoration there. Yet, it is still given as this clause. Who we? What we're saying is, is that there's still an opportunity for restoration, no matter how difficult these things may be. And yet, Jesus makes sure and communicates right here in this exception clause that, who we? I know that my people are sinful. I know they'll invent new ways to sin. I know there will be other indications in a marriage where folks cannot stay, should not stay. But I'm making sure, you ready? I'm making sure that the line is tight. There it is. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure that the line is tight so you don't see it as an opportunity to flex on everything. I'm making sure that the standard is high and so you will come and meet it versus me bringing it down to you to make it easier. I, I get a chance to watch, um, uh, they're, they're so funny. If y'all get a chance to watch uh, Pat Slow's uh, <laughs> coaching boys play basketball, it is hilarious. It, you need to watch it, okay? And so we get a chance to watch it um, at certain age levels. Um, they have what they call an additional goal on top of the goal, all right? It is a lower down version of the 10 foot goal, okay? Um, you know, that's, that's, that's nice, but it doesn't stay that way forever. Okay. As they grow, do we? The standard is still high. Okay. The standard that CJ and Noah are gonna have to be on one day is at a 10 foot. Yeah. It won't stay at that little seven, eight foot goal for forever. The standard is always high, so you will reach the expectation. Watch it, ready? Here's the standard. One man, one woman, and one you before forever. Yes, that's the standard. But, but we're flawed and fallen. We are. But this is the standard. But all these things are going, well, what about this, what about this? This is why this exception clause is in here. Because I know we're flawed, flawed people. Yet, this is the standard. This is the standard. So, does that mean, oh wait, I'm about to go here, I'm about to go here. So, does that mean that I'm committing adultery if I, 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 I was married, I was married before, now, now I'm married again? Did I, did I commit? Well, why? Well, and, and I'm living in adultery right now. And did I, did I, let me say something. Let me say something. Um, watch this. There's a difference between adultery as an act versus a consistent lifestyle thereafter. Watch this. God's design, heavy word, God's design, that was one man, one woman, one union for forever. This is the one I see. Watch this. And a divorce, this is heavy, a divorce for 
regardless of the circumstances, even when people, watch this, even when people um, have been wronged against us, but make sure he's talking about it, like, hey, listen, listen, I know it takes two to tango, but hear me, sometimes there's one party who's doing all the work. You hear what I'm saying here? And Jesus communicates this, watch, 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 watch it, and make sure, make sure, look, Adultery has a one little look. Can we go back for a second? You had a moment of lust. Heard me? A moment. You had a moment of anger. A moment. You are habitually in sin if you stay in lust and stay in anger. Adultery in divorce, watch it, watch it, can, is an act. Now hear me? It becomes a lifestyle. Ooh, it becomes a lifestyle. If the reason that you step out on the move is because you had your eyes on this boot before, and now you step out for the purpose of I'm not in love no more, this, that, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Like, can, can we just go here for a second? Go here for a second. This is why when the preacher gets up at the wedding and says, This is a reverent and holy act, it should not be entered into unadvised. Marriage is serious. It's serious. And can I tell you something? We ain't always ready for that serious act. Because I sure enough know some folks that the only reason, ooh, I'm trying to, trying to, uh, trying to keep, keep, keep it tight. The only reason that they decided, come on, help me get it. The only reason they decided is because, I'll say this, um, I want to be honorable and do the right thing. The honorable thing, sweet boo boo, will be to go to Galatians and talk about the fruits of the Spirit, which are called self control. Yeah, yeah, that's good. You, 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 you worrying about you doing something wrong is not a good reason for you to get in marriage. Oh, I just don't want to burn anymore, Pastor. Like, right? well, hear me. That, that ain't, that's not a good reason to be married. It's a good reason to get in your Bible and start learning about first period when it's called self-control. So there's some folk who got who got in relationship who had no business being in a relationship in the first place. Because you gotta do it for the wrong reasons. Then there's some folk, I ain't gonna know better. These things happen. I ain't no control over this. So does God hate me? No, 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 no. I'm sick of this line of that people who have gone through this are somehow excommunicated from the church, excommunicated from the work of ministry, excommunicated that there is no thought left in them, or there's nothing that they can offer the body of Christ. Now, here's what I'm trying to explain to you. Then what does that mean for some of these Pharisees around here who are good at the law? What does that mean for them? What they going through it? Listen, we want to have this example that was happening in the Old Testament at the time of Jesus. And right now, if there were people who were getting divorced and still, we, still being affirmed. Listen, it'd be good. It'd be good. Quit letting folk write you off because of what happened in that season. Look. It, listen, what can I go here? Even if you were the party that was doing the dirt. I didn't like that. Even if you were the party doing the dirt, what does that mean for you? There's still grace and restoration that's available for you. Thank you, Lord. Still available. So, 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 
Same thing, verse 32. By saying that everyone who divorces his wife, except for righteous or morality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever, is, whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Okay, I'll go back just for a second, and then we'll be finished. The issue with this is that Jesus recognized the context of this on Wednesday. He recognized the context in which he was living and who he was talking to. Remember those two schools of thought I was talking to you about? Yeah, we told you this. Those two schools of thought I was talking to you about? People only live to those thoughts. It's easy for me to step out. And it's forbidden. Jesus is saying, look, the standard has not changed. All right? But you, this, this, this culture, how can you talk to you? You, right? You quit too easy. God, you quit too easy. Can, can the married folk testify in the room? Marriage is hard. You know. I know, I know, I know y'all see. I know y'all see Rob and Kim doing late night chronicles. I know they can make it look. Both can make stuff look easy, but it's really hard. I know you might see me loving on my all oh, it takes it. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It is a covenant relationship that takes work. Meaning, if don't nobody, if don't nobody see that look, that um, that that husband might be looking outside of him. Will we? Uh, that wife might be struggling with being a little too friendly with somebody else who's at work. There might be moments when there is dishonesty in finances. There might be some moments that nobody else wants to tweet about and Facebook about. And yet, the standard is, this is God honoring when you fight for it. Why do I know this? Because this is the relationship that they used to define Jesus and the church. This relationship couldn't be said like between a brother and a sister. No, he said the marriage relationship. Does he know that half of us are crazy? Here's what we're doing. It takes work. It takes work. Do not spend your time fine tuning and fine lining trying to see all of the exceptions. Fight for the standard. As best as you can, fight for the standard. Is there grace given if we come outside of that? Yes, but well, fight for the standard. Don't give up. Yeah, come on. Y'all have one fight real quick. Come on. Who are we? Y'all have one this I don't know what happened, it's whatever. Now I'm gonna go here too now. I'm gonna go all, all the way out here. Because hear me. Um, cohabitation is not trial run marriage. Oh, because who you live with before says nothing about the rich upbringing and poor. It says nothing about what marriage will look like. Yeah, that's right. You had a roommate, not a wife. You had a roommate, not a husband. This is different. This is different. Why? Because here, because a rent is a contract. Marriage is a covenant. This is covenant. We fight for covenant. How do we know? Because God kept fighting for covenant. Do you know why we didn't get wiped out all the time? Come in here, why? Why did we not get wiped out when we could have got wiped out? Better? Covenant. When we should have been wiped out for being irresponsible and sinful, why did we not get wiped out? Covenant. Because God remembered the covenant that He made with His people. When you want to step away, when you want to fight, you got to remember the covenant in which you made. And if you don't want to make a covenant, don't say, I do. Don't do it. If you want to, mm, we, who we, who we, yeah, the grass is, mm, mm, mm. Listen, listen, listen. All I'm talking about, that's what I'm doing. Very full. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Hear me. And for other who, hear me, oh God. I'm hearing the words from my second folk. Listen, listen. I was so listen, like, see, this is why I'm not getting married. <laughs> because you keep seeing them, what's going on with everybody else. You're like, see, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why. Look, look. If this is something that is a desire for you, do not let bad application of a right standard 
turn you away from something that's God offered. Just because they look foolish, don't mean it ain't for you. Just because they ignorant, because we is ignorant of. I said, yes, I said ignorant. Just because they are is not meant for you. There is grace. God, thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. But thank you for not changing the state. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So look, thank you.
is true because we're going to be held accountable for that. So, Father God, we want to just thank your presence for filling the hearts and the minds of your people today. And we pray that that word landed on good ground in their lives. Father God, we want to take a moment to lift up those people to you right now. The people that are in front of you right now, the people that are coming to this church, the people, God, who have transitioned from this church, we want to lift them right up to you right now. And thank you for this season of ministry. Thank you, God, that you're going to use this group of believers to be your hands and your feet. And I pray, Father God, that we will put our hands and feet to the plows of the work of ministry. That we can be a blessing for you and a blessing for this community and a blessing for one another. So, Father God, we thank you this morning for your people. And lastly, God, we're going to lift up Pastor Smith. Father God, I know that Jesus Christ our Lord.